Hello everybody, welcome back to some Dwarven Forge painting where we're learning some new tricks to punch up your pieces. And I'm pretty sure I have uh, paint on my face, but uh, that was just from cleaning up. Uh, that's just my art showing, I guess. Here I just wanna show you some ways to up the contrast of your pieces, basically the range of light and dark. We designed the paint schemes with contrast in mind to have really impactful schemes that show the detail really well, but you can always go further. To start, I'm just gonna increase the shadows. So basically you wanna push the range, make the darkers darker and the lights lighter. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much all we're doing here. So I'm gonna selectively pick the recesses with a thin down paint, something like black or maybe a brown or what any, whatever you think would be appropriate. So I just have some black paint here, add some water to it with my brush, make sure my, my water is damp. And I'll just apply it to the areas that I think would be mostly in shadow. It's a little too thin here. What you can also do is keep the paint a little thick, select your area, rinse your brush, and then pull it out. If you want to try this stuff, I would recommend starting with a really rocky organic piece of yours, like mountains or caverns, because it's easier to hide maybe things that look like mistakes, and it's harder to make mistakes because there's so much variance in a pile of rocks that it's really hard to go wrong. Now you'll notice your, your paint is maybe too thin when it starts kind of beading on the surface. That's part of the durability of the paint, of the factory pieces that can sometimes happen. That's just a clue for you to maybe switch up your dilution a little bit or go to the technique of applying it a little thicker and then pushing it around. But you can always do extra layers anyway to get the effect as far as you'd like. So I would end up going back to these areas anyway. Really this first step is just picking out sort of my map. What areas do I want to do this to? And then I can always finish up the effect later on as we go. And so is this the same thing that you could just use a, like a wash, like a paint that is sold as a wash for? And you basically just turned a non-wash paint into a wash? Yeah, that's basically what I'm doing is thinning down my acrylic. Now with any new material, you'd have to test how it behaves on Dorbanite. Um, so th some of them might be formulated in a way uh, where they behave kind of how I just talked about, where they're beading and stuff. So really I would just use whatever paint you're comfortable with and comfortable diluting and you're familiar with using or just experiment on a scratch piece that you don't mind kind of having a little mad scientist section on a rock piece would be good because you can kind of just do one quick little section that's not going to be noticeable on the table and also remember too as you layer up the paint it might be a little beady here and there but as your paint dries, it will let additional layers grab the piece better. So it's all part of the process. Don't be afraid of the beads. It's just a little hint for your dilution and further traction and grip for your next layers. It's like any new thing, right? Painting over the Dwarvenite and the, uh, the factory paints uh, is slightly different than maybe our our average hand-painted, uh, you know, miniatures. But as you experiment, I mean, I'm already loving this effect. Like, look how sort of subtle the, the black ended up drying. So on the surface, it was kind of beady. It was kind of weird. It didn't behave exactly like your hard plastic or white metal miniature. But it's drying super well kind of matte and durable so yeah it's not going to do any harm just trust it Dorvanite's been designed to take paint in its own ways and take it well so and pain and pain it can handle it I'm even just doing a whole just sort of overall Wash. This is a good a good point too. Is you can think of the the shadows and the recesses, but also kind of imagine a gradient from top to bottom, just because light is often, you know, coming from above. So I'm not even doing a shadow here. I'm just generally making the bottom darker, 
You can see I'm going pretty heavy here, but then we can come back with some moisture and pull some of it up. But there's all kinds of dimensions you can add. You can add the, the deep shadows this way and the highlights this way, but also the, just the form itself from top to bottom. You can have a gradient here. So when we say contrast and pushing your lights and your darks, think of all the dimensions that you can, you know, do that. There's the, the recesses that would be in shadow, but I'm kind of fudging it here for our fantastical adventures of like, there wouldn't necessarily be darkness here, or maybe this is just like weathering or something as moisture collects on the bottom. That's not, I'm not looking for it to be right. I'm looking for it to be cool, you know, so. However, you can just add the variation. It's going to make it a more interesting piece. So we've added some extra shadow. Um, let that dry a little bit. But since we selectively put it into the, the recesses instead of just kind of dumping it all over wash, um, the upper elements should be ready to, to get painted right away. So we've added some extra shadow to our piece. Now we're going to push the highlights. And one of my favorite highlight colors among the Pokorni range is stone edge dry brush. It's kind of an ivory, and this can be used to highlight so many different things, and you can add it into a different base color from a different scheme, and basically trust it to usually give you a pretty reliable highlight. Um, sometimes I use white too, especially for colder surfaces, but I think the ivory or the stone edge is a little more forgiving, just because it has a little warmth. We paint a lot of organic, earthy stuff, and so it's not going to push your mix further than you want. Um, so I usually start with that. Or even stucco is another warm, light tone. It does lean towards some kind of orangey brown, but if that's kind of in your, your color scheme and in your brain, you can also use a color like that. So I have a pile of stone edge already on the palette here. I might add just a touch of black into my mix to start and gain a little confidence. But you can go as, as far as you like here. Like adding different mixes different you know ratios of the same color doesn't necessarily always feel like an additional step this is can all be part of the same step it's just as you're going back to put paint on your brush you might just get an extra dab of x a different dab of y and paint organically so i'm just doing the usual dry brush that we do It's interesting because there's a lot of kind of brown under the, the grays in the original scheme, so I like how it's adding a little color variation. I wouldn't say I'm quite highlighting yet, so this kind of can be something that you experiment with. Or you can do a small section and see how you like it, but I just kind of went for it. But I like how it's adding, especially on something so organic as rock that has a ton of different colors on it, it's just adding some patches. But now I know I, I kind of take the hint and think, okay, I'm going to add some more stone edge. I might do almost straight stone edge here. And a lot of our, our schemes, our factory schemes, do even end with a dry brush of stone edge just because it's such a great highlight color. But here you can just add even more. And again, I'm focusing on the top because of course we want to hit all of the edges. And in fact, the sharper the edge, the more you want to focus on it for the highlight, but I'm going heavier, a generally larger area of highlight on the top. Like I might do this whole thing up here just to get, again, this top to bottom contrast as well as the, the deep and outward contrast. So I'll really hit this. And sometimes I'll even do this like I'm doing now where I'll get almost as far as I think I want to go on the top section, not even worry about the rest, but now this is my gauge. So if I think this wants to be the brightest and this is going to be a little less, I know I'm going off of the brightest point. So as I start to paint other sections, I know kind of where I'm coming from. The amount of paint that I want to apply is based on the brightest point. So pieces with sharp edges, um, I'm thinking of the ruins a lot, especially because they they do use Stone Edge uh, in the mix of their highlight. But especially if you, you get a little confident in your dry brushing or your side angle brushing, you can get some heavy, almost undiluted 
stone edge and just hit it. So it's the same color, but the opacity will be higher, so it will look brighter. So I'm doing just a little selective dab on these really sharp edges to get them to to stick out here. So now it's interesting. I'll, I'll do I'll pull off some of my excess paint make sure I hit these but now with the same step again we're not really adding an extra step but the variance between this section and down here adds some of that variety so again this might be a lot to do over a large collection of pieces but especially I mean I do love these little peaks but you know that's gonna stick out on your build so maybe just some selective pieces here and there you can just sort of punch up just a little. So now it still has all the colors of the Arnthor scheme and a lot of the colors we've used exist in the scheme. So it's going to be cohesive, but it's just a little, it has a little more dimension to it. So that's about it for contrast. Again, you can apply these to any color, any piece. It's just about making the darker areas darker and the lighter area is lighter, the range that exists on the piece, spread that apart with your mixes. And so feel free to experiment as you do that. And if you do, please post it to social media and tag us. I would love to see your ideas and your results experimenting with contrast. If you have more questions, please join me on Hamster's Hobby Hang every Thursday on Twitch at Dwarven Forge Live, 6 p.m. Eastern, and hop in our Discord. Our community loves to talk paint. They love to answer questions. And so it'll be a great time there as well for you to learn more about painting, more about contrast. And that's it for now. So thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time.